How heavy is the average two-car garage door? According to AskingLot.com, a typical two-car garage door weighs between 155 and 225 pounds, depending on the construction material. How heavy can a garage door opener lift? According to Home Guides, a half a horsepower garage door opener can lift approximately 300 pounds, which is yes! the weight of a two-car steel door. A one. What happens if you overweight a garage door opener? <laughs> Apparently nothing. The spring manual. I'm sure it's fine. One of the things I like most about the setup of my shop is I have my table saw backed up towards my garage door and what that does is that allows me to raise the garage door when I need extra infeed and because I put all of my benches at the same height I have about 20 feet or so of outfeed. But one of the most obnoxious parts about my shop is all of my table saw sleds are held right here even though my table saw is way over here. So anytime I need a sled I have to walk all the way over there. So what I've started tinkering with is finding a way of hanging my sleds on my garage door. And for a while, I've been just hanging them up here on this bar. And that sort of worked for a little while until this one, oh jeez, until this one fell and broke. So that really got me thinking I need some sort of more firm attachment on this garage door. Otherwise, this door is just wasted space. The first thing I thought about doing was adding some sort of a French cleat onto here, but I really don't want to impede the door's ability to open because, like I said, I use it as infeed. And then I thought, well, maybe if I attached a hinge onto here, the door could open, and I could put a cleat on that, and then when it opens, it would just swing out. But I really don't want to put any screws inside my material. And then I realized these hinges are hollow on the inside, and so I could probably find some way of hooking inside there. And I found this round bar that fits in here perfectly. This is actually off of an old lawn decoration. But if I find a way of making a hook out of that, that would work pretty well. And so I started looking around at different shapes that I could make out of some coat hanger wire and I realized if I make a U shape, I could slide something onto here and that could work as a hook. Uh, but the problem is that if you're hooking this direction, it just is going to want to fall out. And then I started playing with this design and I put a hook on the end to try and keep it from sliding out a little bit more. And then I bent up this S shape so that I can slide something on here and I don't have to touch the hook and I won't end up with one of those pegboard situations because as every maker has found out at one point or another is that pegboard sucks. But then I realized there's two ways of doing this. One is the S hook and the other, if I bend it out like that, then I could put something like a block on here and this block could be glued to one of my sleds. Um, so I really think this is probably the best solution in terms of ease of use. But the problem with this is I have kids in the shop and I have me in the shop and if anybody runs into a piece of round bar that's sticking straight out, this is more likely to injure a person. So as much as I do think this design is better, I'm going to go with more of an S-hook shape. Sometimes the function is not just about function, it's also about safety. And I, I, I know how that sounds coming from me. So we want this to be at least that long.
You could probably do this with a threaded rod, but I found these bolts uh, under my workbench that I will never use for anything, so let me go ahead and use them. A little crooked, but if I did this right, the thread should still work. If you're careful, you won't damage the threads. There we go. After a while, I gotta put a good system down. One of the other things that a lot of woodworkers will do, they'll cut a block kind of like that, and then they'll glue that block right here behind the sled, and that keeps their fingers safe from the blade, and so the blade just ends up being embedded. It never actually comes all the way through. And so I figure if I make something like that for my sleds, I can, let's see, I can drill a hole somewhere in here, and that will be a perfect spot for my hook to hang. So every time I make one of these sleds, I worry more about the squareness of the fence to the kerf rather than uh, the fence with the back of the piece here. And so I have all this plywood and these two runners that are extruding too far back for this to work. So I need to find a way of jointing that down. And so what I came up with was I have this fence that is perfectly in line with this table saw blade. So that way I can sort of use the fence as a reference and joint that bottom piece in plane. So I need to move my fence over a little bit. All right, there we go. That's perfect. Okay, so I ended up with seven of these. Uh, I wanted eight, but this one broke. So really quick, I wanted to show you. One of the things that I want to do is, I'd rather have some lock nuts on here because as this, this spins so easily, I'm worried they're just gonna fall off. So one of the things that you can do, if you ever want a lock washer, but you don't, or lock nut, but you don't have them, you go and just fill the threads a little bit with the hot glue. Hot glue, is a polymer just like nylon is. And nylon is what you find inside the lock, lock, the lock nuts. 
and then you wrench that on there, go ahead and get rid of some of that excess, and that'll act just like a lock nut when you don't have them. So uh, this isn't gonna work in a high heat area like an engine, but uh, in the shop it works fantastic. Okay, let's hope that this works the way I think it will. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on, you gotta see this. So this does work really well, but when I let it down, I'm two sleds too heavy and it triggers. So if I take these two sleds off every time I put it down, then it will actually work a lot better. Now it'll close. <laughs> this is absurd. So most of the time I'm not going to be opening up this garage door, but basically any time I want to let it down, I'm going to have to take those two sleds off because the garage door is throwing a fit about it. So it's, <laughs> it's going to work for me. Okay, so this orientation here seems to be the best. If I, move, if I move this one up higher and I leave the heavy sled off of there, it works really well. <laughs> See, it opens up. Let's make sure it closes. So uh, tell me what you guys think about the project. Is this something, am I gonna break my garage door? <laughs> I'm thinking maybe if I tension the spring, I could probably get this to work, but I don't really wanna mess with the garage door uh, any more than I already have. So uh, let me know what you think. Am I gonna break it? Let me know in the comments. Uh, thank y'all for watching. Catch y'all next time.